So, I am still in awe with this camera. Like, Sony have really kicked a home run with this. They've just gone, hey, Canon, hey, Fujifilm, hey, Black Magic. Check out our APC camera, 4K 120, really low rolling shutter, great ISO, low light performance. This thing is just, it's incredible. I am loving this camera and this is probably, I'm gonna be right there and then on that release date and be like, order straight away. This is a perfect camera for your A camera, this is a perfect camera for your B camera, for your FX3, for your FX6, for your FX9. This definitely does suit the cinema line. Like it is a phenomenal camera. It's got so many awesome features. That really nice down sampled 4K. It's just so good. And this video was actually sponsored by Squarespace, which is an all-in-one platform to help build your brand, which we're gonna be talking about later because I utilize a store so I can sell my LUTs and all those kind of things and obviously display all my professional work. So I'm not just, you know, sending someone my Instagram link or TikTok link or something like that. It's an actual professional website. You'll be taken seriously and help build your brand and uh, yeah, reach those clients that you actually want to reach. So yes, this video is actually going to be all about low light performance and that 4K image quality and a little bit about rolling shutter, but I'm gonna be doing a whole different video on that as well. I just wanted to dive specifically into this because these are the topics that I know a lot of you guys are actually wondering. And there are actually some features in here that the FX3 doesn't have. So it actually has more features than the FX3, which is so good for the price. My God, this thing's crazy. Let's get into the video. So we're gonna be talking about the FX30 and low light performance against a7 IV, but also the OG FX6, because the FX6 is part of the Cine line and so is the FX30. I don't have the FX3 anymore. I did give that back to Sony, so I can't compare it to that. It'd be a great comparison, but the FX6 pretty much is the same sensor out of the FX3, but it is processed very slightly different. So I'm gonna be comparing this and seeing what it looks like in low light situations, comparing it to ISO 800 and ISO 2500. 100 as well and obviously 12,800 we all know the fx6 is going to kill in that one because it does have that dual base of 800 and 12,800 now the fx30 does have a dual base of 800 and 2500 and it's very similar to a74 but the a74 has a low end base of 800 and 3200 so these are the two base isos that perform the best in s log Three. It is a little bit different when it comes to s tone, but I won't be comparing that today. This is for S-Log3 users, but this can actually translate to s tone just in a few different stops lower. Now this is at ISO 2500. Now this is actually the second base of the FX30. So this is advantageous to the FX30 because this is the second base, it's native, it's going to be the best performing compared to the A74 and the FX6. So take that into account. Also, something to take into note that the FX6 has noise reduction, and there are three different settings you can choose from. This was set to low, so there's low, medium, high. This was set to low.
So when it comes to ISO 800, the FX30 does perform pretty decent. I did use the same lens with this one as well. I use the DZO Film Catazoom lens. Now that is a zoom lens with a T-stop that stays consistent throughout the zoom range, which is perfect for this test because I can recompose the shot to be pretty much exactly the same as best as I can to account for that crop factor between full frame and APS-C. Now I did shoot everything at T2.9, I did shoot everything at one over 50th of a shutter until I went up the ISO ranges, that's when I had to ride the shutter to cut back on the light as the ISO went up to introduce more light, cut back the light with the shutter. And it does seem like the FX30 doesn't perform as well as the a7 IV and FX6. Sure, at ISO 800, they're both super clean. It's incredible how, what Sony do with their sensors. When it goes up to that second base at 2,500, you can clearly see the FX30 doesn't perform as well as the a7 IV and even the FX6 right here. So the FX6 is on low noise suppression as well. And uh, this is meant to be the best I suppose optimal conditions for the FX30 because it is into the second base ISO and the A74 reaches its second base ISO in uh, 3200. But this is probably what it comes down to, you know, full frame versus APS-C. And uh, this is actually rated at 14 stops of dynamic range on the FX30, as opposed to the 15 stops of dynamic range on the A74 and FX6 as well. So it's an interesting result there at 2500. But like I said, if you do go up to that second base on the FX6 at 12,800, it just blows all of them away. Now the FX6 does have control over your noise. You can have low, medium, or high. Whereas the FX30, you don't have any control over the noise whatsoever. So there would be some internal noise suppression in there. So if you did record raw externally, you will notice that it will be much noisier in post because it's recording exactly what the sensor is actually giving you. And it's bypassing the processing into the Ninja 5 to give you a pretty much a raw image. So let's talk about the colors. As you can see here, the FX30, A74, FX6 have different colors. This was graded with the basic Sony Rec. 709 conversion lights and the lighting was exactly the same on all three of these cameras. The white balance was set to exactly the same as well, 5600 Kelvin. So we could actually tell what the colors are actually doing right here. And you can see the A74, the FX6 and the FX30 have different red tones. So mainly look at the red tones here. This is a lot of the skin tones and the A74 generally does have more greenish skin tones. So I do actually make it a little bit more pinkish and reddish in post-production through my LUT. Now, Obviously, how do I sell my LUTs as well? You probably see the link in the description below, but it is linked to my website. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And actually, gratefully, I actually do use Squarespace already. So all you need to do is type in jackedvisions.com.au. You can obviously get your own domain name as well. Jackvisions.com.au is obviously what I chose, but you can see it's optimized for mobile, which is great. So it looks like this on the mobile, but it's obviously different on your desktop because you know the desktop version is slightly different, slightly wider, but I've got my showreel, I've got a whole bunch of my professional work as well, which is where you do wanna display a lot of your professional work. And if you keep scrolling down, you can see that's where my LUT is. So you're gonna open an online store if you do sell merchandise or LUTs or anything like that. It makes it so much easier, completely streamlined. So make sure you use my code Jason Morris at Squarespace. You can actually get 10% off, which is incredible. Like I said, I've been using Squarespace for quite some time. I think I actually used Jared Poland's code, but use my code. My code's better, Jason Morris. <laughs> Please, that helps me out and obviously helps you guys out because you get 10% off you know, your first purchase, which is great. And like I said, this is going to help you display a lot of your professional work to your clients. So you're not just giving your Instagram or TikTok handle to someone and they're just like, hey, do you do any sort of professional work? Yeah, I get it a lot, all right? I do a whole bunch of Instagram work and they're like, do you actually do any professional work? Like, come on guys. I swear to God, I do a ton of commercials and all that sort of stuff. So it's all on my website. I mean, you guys can check it out if you want, but uh, yeah, let's get back into the video. 
But overall, I do think the image looks incredibly clean when it comes to the FX30. Obviously, I am a big fan of exposing as perfect as possible and leaving it at the base ISOs as best as possible. So I use Cine EI a lot, or pretty much the whole time in my FX6. I don't ride the ISO. Try and keep it at base ISO as best as possible. So 800 is generally the one that I stick with pretty much the whole time. There are some circumstances where I'm run and gun and the FX6 12,800 works well use some ND filters to cut back on the light and you've still got a really clean image if you're trying to bump up that ISO level. But like I said, bring lights the best you can. Bring as many lights, try and expose as correctly as you can, keeping your camera at the base ISO. Okay, so I caught up with my friend Joanna to do a couple of shoots on a couple of different days. Now, this first one that I'm gonna show you guys is pretty much outdoors and uh, well, actually, I'm gonna show you the indoors one first. We'll save that for another video because we really need to dive deep into you know 4K 50, 4K 25, 4K 120, all those frame rates and you know do the comparison with those ones. So we'll save that for another video because there's so much information on this and I can't compress it into a short video. So this is the FX6 against the FX30. Now this is only 25 frames per second. It's a backlit situation, but I still did have a key light there for her. And uh, the image quality, is, you know, pretty comparable. You can definitely tell that the FX30 is a sharper, more detailed image, yet that 12 or 10 megapixel sensor of the FX3 still looks incredible. Like the lower resolution just makes it look more filmic as such, you know, end quotes, because what is filmic, what is cinematic? <laughs> it's just one of those blanket terms a lot of YouTubers want to use. But let's not go into that. We're digging ourselves into a bit of a rabbit hole there. But overall, I think the FX30 does incredibly well. It's just like the a7 IV where it's got a downsampled 4K image, so it's gonna look a little bit more detailed, a little bit more crisp. Sure, my framing was slightly off because uh, I had to move it forward and back in different tripods because the FX6 does have a bigger tripod. I've got the uh, small rig VCT plate. Let's not get into that, but uh, my framing was off, but I zoomed it in 300% to make it as even as possible. FX30, personally, in my mind, looks a little bit better, but it all is relative to what do you feel like you prefer? A sharper, more crisper image or more softer, more, uh, I don't know, less resolution style image. It's completely subjective. That is the biggest thing. Image quality is completely subjective. You could go for softer, you could go for more detailed. It really depends, let's be real. It's, there's too much information out there to really understand what is right and what is wrong because filmmaking is art and art is subjective. Okay, so let's touch base on the rolling shutter. Now that was pretty much the Achilles heel of the a7 IV and a lot of people are just like, it's got rolling shutter, it's a shit camera. Come on guys, come on. Stop it YouTubers. It's all YouTubers who talk about rolling shutter. It's not actually an issue when it comes to the real professional world. There is a right tool for the right job. You do not use a hammer to put in a screw, okay? I mean, you can, it's, it's another talk on its own, but there is a right tool for the right job, okay? You must understand that the a7 IV isn't a video camera. It does well with video, it does well with photos. It's a hybrid camera. It's not a cinema camera that has a fast readout sensor or a global shutter sensor. Like, come on, let's be real. If you need really fast, great rolling shutter performance, get the FX3, get the FX6, stop complaining. Don't worry about rolling shutter unless it actually affects your work. If you are whipping your camera side to side, you are an idiot. Stop whipping your camera side to side. But if you are a sports photographer, videographer, sorry, that may become an issue. If you're filming something with fast motion, that can become an issue. Potentially use crop mode, potentially use 1080. There are workarounds with this. Or buy the A7S III, buy the FX3, by the FX6, fast rolling shutter performance cameras, you need to invest in that if that is your tool because it's the right tool for the right job, okay? So stop complaining about rolling shutter. The rolling shutter performance on the FX30 is incredible. It is great. I thought, hey, it's a 6K sensor that down samples to 4K. It's not gonna be good. Surely it's gonna be like the A7 IV and there's gonna be a whole bunch of people complaining. 
and you know, it's gonna be its downfall, but they've done very well. The sensor is a faster sensor readout than the A74 will be, mainly because is it, you know, an APS-C sensor, so it's a, a smaller surface area. I'm not sure, I'm sure CineD will do a rolling shutter performance on their uh, website and on their YouTube. So, you know, watch out for that one as well. But rolling shutter performance is great. It's not like the FX6, but it still is really good. It's definitely much better than the A7 IV. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like I said, subscribe so you can see these next videos on the FX30. We're gonna be comparing it against the A7 IV with slow motion, the 1080 slow motion. We're gonna be comparing it to the FX6 in slow motion. We're also gonna be having a look at more in depth of the rolling shutter and how that's going to affect your images. We're going to look at uh, all the image quality and the Muay Thai video that I did. So, you know, that has a lot to do with rolling shutter because it's high action kickboxing sports. So stay tuned for that. See you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.